Refrigerant recovery is always a hot topic, and there's multiple reasons we should be recovering refrigerant. The first one everybody thinks about is the environmental hazard. Well, we know that any chemical that we've ever made in mankind has some kind of a negative effect, whether we know about it now or in the future. I'm not gonna get into the environmental side because now it's very politically driven and there are so much false information out there, so many facts and also partial truths that it's very difficult to know what's really happening and the full effect. So I'm just gonna leave the environmental side of it completely alone so that we prevent the volatile discussions that are connected with that. Number two on that list is the legal aspect of it. There may be many laws that you agree or disagree with, but there's still laws and they have consequences. In HVAC, we've all had to take an EPA 608 certification exam, at least one level of that exam. So we know not to vent refrigerant. The whole basis of that exam is don't mix refrigerants, don't vent refrigerants, and rules, dates, a bunch of numbers, don't mix refrigerants, don't vent refrigerants. It's just over and over and over. So everybody knows that we're not supposed to vent that refrigerant. It's just the basics of what we do. And number three, by law, it's the law that we have to recover this refrigerant. We are not allowed to vent this refrigerant in the air. And legally, there may be many laws that you agree or disagree with, but there's still the laws. And if you break those laws, you have potential consequences for that. So regardless of if you like it or believe in it or agree with it, it's still going to be the law. Number four, the potential of a fine. I believe the fine right now is a $47,500 fine per instance per day. That's huge, plus imprisonment, federal imprisonment time. I do not want to be sitting in prison and then when I get out having to pay all this fine money just because I didn't want to put refrigerant into a tank. So the fine aspect of it is too high for me to take that risk on. And we also have to take into account the reward money. So the EPA offers a $10,000 reward for anybody turning somebody else in. So do you trust your coworker enough for $10,000 won't record you and turn you in for venting refrigerant? $10,000, that's a, that's a huge risk. Am I, do I trust that person for $10,000 just because I don't want to put refrigerant into a recovery tank? I don't trust anybody for $10,000. Nobody am I gonna trust for $10,000. Not gonna happen. Now, on the other hand, I do need to make this note. It's highly unlikely that you will ever receive any reward money. I've done searches and I can't find anybody that's actually been paid out that reward money. There's a lot of people that's turned other people in for the reward money, they've never gotten it. Then there's the people who say it probably won't be enforced. Well, probably won't be enforced is still a very high risk factor. And right now the EPA has been underfunded or defunded, so there's very few regulators out there. But we know with politics, it always swings all one way and then all back the other. There is no middle ground. So while right now the EPA could be underfunded, it's just a matter of time before we swing the other way and they are overfunded. They have all these extra people that have jobs to do. And what they'll do is go back through all that old information and all these old reports and start following up on those. It's certainly not worth that risk for me. And the next factor, and this one is also very, very important, should probably be the number one, the availability factor. R22 was illegal to produce new or to import into the country in the year 2020. You can't make any more. There's no new refrigerant happening. However, we can still take this old refrigerant put it into a recovery tank, send it off to be reclaimed, and they put it back in new condition, so we still have it to be used. So the more people that recover this old refrigerant, the more refrigerant we still have to be used in other scenarios. So it's a great reason to be able to recover that refrigerant, so I still have it to be used. We also know that now 410A is on the chopping block, so eventually that refrigerant's gonna be gone. So the more 410A that we recover and recycle, the more 410A refrigerant we'll have to work with. It pretty much comes down to simple supply and demand. And if that's not enough reason, also with mini refrigerants, they will pay you for it. For example, R22, if I take R22 out, put it into this tank, and I keep it clean and clear, and I take this refrigerant to the supply house, they give me a credit. I literally get money for taking this old refrigerant in. I get paid. Some other refrigerants like 410A isn't quite being paid yet, but it's just a matter of time before they will start paying you for it. So you can get paid for recovering refrigerant, which you're legally required to do in the first place. It's a win-win situation. I can't think of any scenario that I wouldn't need to recover this refrigerant. All the way around, it's a win scenario. But yet, you're still going to meet people that do not recover refrigerant. Walking to the truck and getting this recovery tank to put the refrigerant in is just simply too much work. So what they'll do is they'll just go and cut the refrigerant lines and just let the refrigerant dump out. You're also gonna meet people that openly vent refrigerant. They actually brag about it. They just think that it's okay. So you're gonna see people that cut these refrigerant lines and they're gonna take that risk on. There's also other people that have overcharged systems and they just open the manifold gates and just let the refrigerant out to the atmosphere. And there's really no reward other than the one minute you save walking to the truck and getting a recovery tank. So they 
risk versus the reward is completely out of balance. So there's really, to me, no reason to be venting refrigerant, but people do, and they brag about it. Unfortunately, you're going to be put in that situation. Never argue with somebody. If somebody wants to do something illegal, that's on them entirely. The question's gonna be, many times they're gonna want you to do something illegal. They're gonna tell you to go vent that refrigerant. Well, now this is gonna be you at risk. Think about a truck driver. If a trucking company overloads a truck and sends it out, the truck driver is gonna be getting that ticket for it. He's responsible for that truck. So if your boss tells you to vent refrigerant, it's gonna come out on you. Now, hopefully nobody will ever ask you to break the law. Hopefully nobody will ever tell you to vent refrigerant. I hope, unfortunately I've had many, many students where their employer or their lead told them to vent refrigerant. Now that's gonna be a very uncomfortable spot for you and I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I can give you some advice and things you can do to help protect yourself. For example, record your lead saying that he wants you to vent refrigerant. So then if the time comes, at least if you go down, somebody else is going down with you. And also you may find that, wait, you want me to record you saying to do something illegal? No, no, I'm not gonna say that at all. You can also keep a logbook. I was told at this date to do these things. And if you keep that logbook, not just that you remember it was approximate, you actually wrote them down and kept a running log of that, that can help keep you out of trouble in the situation it happens. Now it's unlikely there's gonna be any EPA police coming along and checking on you, but now everybody has cameras. You never know if the customer's watching you and they see that refrigerant come out. Maybe they're big environmentalists and they see you vending refrigerant and they are very upset about it and they record you doing something that you knew you shouldn't have done. It's gonna be your call, your decision. However, so many of these people are so big on venting refrigerant and they've come up with these little methods and these little stories to help them feel better about it. Let's discuss one of those methods. The first time I heard about this, I really thought it was a joke. I thought somebody was pulling my leg, but I've heard this now in multiple cities in multiple states across the country. So a lot of people believe that this is true. So I'm gonna go ahead and address this now so that when you hear about this, you know that it's complete and total BS. But the story is they fill a bucket full of water, they take the refrigerant hose, they dump it into the water, and then they open the refrigerant and it magically catches all the chlorine so it doesn't have an ozone depletion issue. And that's completely, completely false. So for refrigerant to break down, for that chlorine to break down, it takes time and sunlight. It doesn't just break down like it does with the chlorine in your pool. It takes time for that to happen. When you take that liquid refrigerant coming out into this tank, all it does is boil from a liquid to a vapor and that vapor comes right out of the top of the water. It just simply makes water bubbles, splashes the water, and the vapor goes right out of the bucket. It's still 100% illegal and it has zero environmental safety issues whatsoever. It just simply goes through the water and straight into the air. It does nothing to stop the chlorine. Even if it was a type of chlorine that was soluble in water, it'd become at such a high rate, it would do nothing to stop it. The bigger issue it's doing by putting it in water, it's contaminating your refrigerant hose. And we want to keep water out of our refrigeration system. So if we have water inside of a refrigeration hose and we then add refrigerant in the next call, now we're pushing that moisture, that H2O, into the next customer's refrigeration system and that's turning to an acid and that's now causing damage to their system. And you hear people say, well, I've been doing that for X number of years, never had a problem. No, no, you're not going to immediately see that problem. It's taking away the life of the system. You don't see the end life taken away from it. Just like if you never changed the oil, I never changed the oil and I charged for it. You don't see it immediately, but it has long-term damage it is going to be doing to that system. It's taking life away from that system. So if you're going to do something illegal like vent refrigerant, putting it in water only causes a bigger problem with other people's unit. And it's absolutely laughable, except it's scary because so many people believe that that actually works. And I just... I can't comprehend that whatsoever. I can't, I just can't even, I can't imagine how they think that's okay. So if you're gonna vent refrigerant and do it illegal, I can't stop you, I'm not gonna stop you, and it's not my job to stop you. However, as a student coming into the trade, I want to warn you about some of the things you might possibly see and give you an idea about the bigger picture of recovering refrigerants. If nothing else, simply recover it so we have more of the refrigerant to use as they're no longer being made anymore. One final thought on that, if we're not gonna follow the rules and regulations of our certification to do what we're supposed to do, then really we don't need all this recovery equipment. And really the homeowner doesn't need all this recovery equipment. And really the homeowner doesn't need us. They can just simply dump the refrigerant to the air and just dump refrigerant in until it's making noise and blowing cold air and they don't need us at all. 
However, if we're going to be professionals in this field, whether we like it or not, whether we believe in it or not, whether we agree with it or not, if we follow these recovery laws and recovery rules, that professional standard stays at that high standard. So now we're doing it the proper way. The homeowner is paying us to do it the proper way, and we're following through with that, and everybody wins.